Families of 15 Macon teens buried their child last year after losing them to gun violence. Those losses will have ripple effects beyond their homes and their schools. So what role do Macon street gangs play in this increase of teen deaths? Tonight, we continue our series Caught in the Crosshairs, the risks and remedies of teen violence. 13 Investigates Ashlyn Webb talks with a former superior in a Macon gang about how the gangs operate and how they drive violence in the city. My name is Latoris Oliver. I have come a long way in life. I used to be in the gang. This is where Latoris Oliver's story started. Anthony Holmes on Eisenhower Parkway. I was born and raised here in the project. Yeah, about 10. Gangsta disciples alone on this street. Five down this side of the road and five over. <laughs> How young were you when you first started talking to gang members? About around the age of 14, 15. I seen all the popularity that these guys was getting and, and, and all the girls and the money and cars that they was getting by just being in the gang. He says by age 17, he had dropped out of school. He began recruiting other gang members as young as 11 years old and also started dealing drugs. See, I was in a gang called Gangster Disciples. So our colors was black and white. So every day you get up, put on your colors, you go meet your superior, and then you, 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 you meet up and see what the activity for that day is, whether we go do a drive-by, what head drug dealer we go go see today to get the best deal to sell drugs. It was a business. It was a business. Oliver says gangs then and now claim territory street by street. It's a war over money, drugs, women, and power. We never knew when our enemy was going to cross over in territory. So we had to have guns, we had to have knives, we had to have all, all kind of weapons and be ready to kill. And that trend is only getting worse, especially with teens and gangs. In 2022, Macon lost 15 teens to gun violence, more than double from the year before. Bibb County Sheriff's Office says a third of them were affiliated with a gang. Lieutenant Jason Badgler is part of Bibb County's gang task force. As young gang members die, he says younger children are joining. That younger element has a greater propensity to use violence to gain stature within that criminal street gang. Um, it's startling. You know, when you hear these 12, 13, 14 years old that are involved in these drive-by shootings. As I got friends that in the grave, I got friends that's in prison for the rest of their lives. I'm one of the blessed ones. I'm blessed. Latouris Oliver says he spent over 17 years in the gang. He says he was in and out of jail at least 20 times, but his final arrest was his wake up call. We were shackled by tools going to the courtroom, shackled by feet and by hand. So we got to take the steps and I'm just praying to God, Lord, get me out of this situation. God, I guess he heard my cry. Nearly 10 years later, he stands in front of the congregation at Smith Street Baptist. Through their prison outreach, he often tells inmates his story. How do you get out of a gang? I just simply turned my life over to Christ. Did you know any other gang members that tried to get out and they weren't as blessed as you were? Oh, yes, 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 unsuccessful. Got beaten, some to the point they, they lost their lives. Sharing your story, are you scared at all about retaliation, about violence, sharing your story? Oh, no, 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 because I know that I'm under the divine will. I'm under the divine protection of God. And I know the things I went through, I didn't go through it for nothing. For 13 Investigates, I'm Ashton Webb. We're exploring the root causes and solutions of teen violence this month and beyond. You can find these stories right now on 13WMAZ.com and on our mobile app. Just look for the section called Caught in the Crosshairs.